بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم وی اسٹارٹ وتھ دی ویڈیو 3 آن سیکشوئل ریپروڈکشن اینڈ پلانٹس اینڈ ان دس وی گو ٹو ڈسکس دی اسٹرکچر اف سیڈ اینڈ دی جرمینیشن اف سیڈز اینڈ دس از 5090 او لیول بایولوجی ناؤ فرسٹ اف آل لیٹس لک ایٹ دی اسٹرکچر اف ا سیڈ اینڈ دی پارٹس اف ا سیڈ سو دی آؤٹر موسٹ پارٹ از کالڈ دی ٹیسٹا اور اٹس آلسو کالڈ دی سیڈ کوٹ وچ از اف کورس ا ویری جنرل ٹرم یوزڈ so testa or the seed coat and this uh, protects the seed from injury and drying out then the main part of the seed is made up of the cotyledons and these are the food stores for the initial growth of the seed because you see the seed till the leaves develop and can photosynthesize it has to have some food reserves and those food reserves are in the form of the cotyledons and then we have the two most important parts of this which is called the radical and the plumule so i always make it a very simple way for you all to remember the radical is going to develop into the root so r radical r root and then the plumule is the leaves which is going to become the shoot so the three main components number 1 testa or the seed coat number 2 the cotyledons number 3 the radical So if I have to shade the radical, the radical is this part, which is going to ultimately go and uh, develop into the root. So R radical R root, R radical R root, and then the plumule is going to become the shoot. So this is the main parts of a seed, and the radical and the plumule together make up the embryo of the plant. Embryo means it's the little baby plant, which will then of course develop into the shoot and the root systems. <clears throat> now as you can see from this diagram is how the fruit and seeds develop from different parts of the flower so basically it is the uh, this is the stigma style and the ovary and this ovary will become the fruit and you can see here you see this is the stem and then these are the sepals these are the sepals and this is where the fruit has developed and the seeds the seed is the fertilized ovule and the fruit is the ovary wall now if this fruit of course is a very juicy fruit and a sweet fruit then it's going to be dispersed by animals like for instance if it's growing in the wild then a monkey eats this fruit and just throws away the seed and the seed will fall somewhere and maybe germinates if it gets the suitable uh, conditions which are necessary for germination so the ovary becomes the fruit and the ovule where this fertilization takes place the seed is the fertilized ovule there's another diagram of a lemon which is a fruit now the only thing which i want you all to be very clear about is that the ovary wall is going to become the fruit wall and that ovary wall which is called the fruit wall is called the pericarp and the pericarp of course is made of the endocarp and the mesocarp of course we don't have to really go into a lot of detail into that but basically you have to know that the pericarp is the fruit wall pericarp is the fruit wall another diagram showing you this again seed endosperm of course we don't have to do endosperm seeds and the seed coat and the pericarp is made up of these three layers the exocarp and the mesocarp and the endocarp and this is of course the fleshy part of in this situation like you know if you eat a mango what you're eating the mesocarp and then we throw away the seed another diagram showing you the uh, internal fruit there's a seed and then we have the outer three layers endocarp mesocarp and the exocarp is all called the pericarp and this pericarp is actually the fruit wall at the different steps of germination and how does the seed germinate uh, of those we will study what are the factors necessary for germination but whenever the factors are present then what happens to the seed the seed the root has taken water and minerals from the soil the testa splits 
and the radical grows down which is the young group and as you can see now this is the first stage and then this is the second stage and then this is the third stage so this is a couple of few days later now what has happened the roots have developed the root system has developed there's a main root there's side roots and the testa has fallen off and the cotyledons have been carried up above the ground and the plumule is going to turn into the young shoot then on the third on a few days later what do we see the cotyledons get smaller why do they get smaller they get smaller because the food in it the stored food is being used by this plant the plant cannot photosynthesize till it develops its leaves so the cotyledons food in the cotyledons is all being used up and the green leaves will now start to make food for the plant so this is the thing when the photosynthetic area increases so it will be making enough food so then of course there is going to be a gain in mass as well because unless the leaves start to become such a larger surface area that then the photosynthesis is more than the rate of respiration only then we will say there is going to be an increase in mass from here to here there is going to be a decrease in mass why because the food used in the cotyledons is just going to be used up so there is going to be a decrease in mass but then when the leaves develop and then the leaves become developed to a certain uh, surface area only then photosynthesis will be more than respiration and then of course there is going to be an increase in mass a very short brief table which is comparing uh, plumule and the radical the plumule is the embryonic shoot radical is the embryonic root uh, the plumule grows after the growth of the radical comes out first from the seed grows upwards out of the soil grows downwards into the soil less white than the radical more white than the plumule capable of photosynthesis capable of absorbing water from the soil so very good comparison between the plumule and the radical another diagram showing you the different stages of germination and how the radical grows down and then the roots develop and then as the shoot develops and then the seeds the leaves increase in photosynthetic area and another diagram which shows you how the different stages of germination how does it progress to the uh, part of the syllabus it says the investigate and state the environmental conditions that affect germination of seed suitable so it's a suitable so this mnemonic is very simple to remember it's TWO so this stands for temperature and it means a suitable temperature why because you see all these processes which we are studying in biology are all enzyme controlled reactions so enzymes have an optimum temperature under which they work best so a suitable temperature for every seed is going to be different it's not going to be the same for every seed it's going to be different for maybe a mango seed or an apple seed or or a cucumber seed so temperature suitable suitable temperature then water not moisture please remember it's actually water water is going to immobilize water is going to mobilize the enzymes and you see because all enzyme reactions need water a watery medium so water is going to be needed for that and then of course we have the third and the most important one is oxygen now please do not write air so air would be wrong because if you wrote air air would meant all the all the other gases which are present in the air we only want oxygen so a very easy mnemonic for you to remember TWO although there are three points but temperature water and oxygen <clears throat> so these are the three factors necessary for germination now what we need to do is number one we need the temperature for enzymes we need water also to mobilize enzymes and oxygen we need for aerobic respiration because aerobic respiration is going to release energy so aerobic respiration will release the necessary energy for the growth of the seed now wherever in the syllabus it says investigate you must know the practical procedures so what we need to do is we need to take four petri dishes and in each one of them we have five soaked seeds 
first of course you've added the same mass of cotton wool to all of them so we added cotton wool to all of them and then we added five soaked seeds to all of the four petri dishes five soaked seeds soaked seeds soaked means that you kept them in water soaked them for about five to six hours and then you place them on this petri dish now the first one which is this one has no water but the temperature has been kept at 25 degrees celsius the second one has water so the second one has water is kept at 25 degrees celsius the third one this is the third one here has been kept in the fridge water has been added to it has been kept in the fridge at 4 degrees celsius now this is not going to germinate this one which has no water is not going to germinate this one which has been kept in the fridge is not going to germinate and the fourth one what we have done to that petri dish is we've enclosed it in a clear plastic bag and then we placed a chemical in it to absorb oxygen the fourth petri dish we have added a, a little beaker and we've closed it in a plastic bag and we've added a beaker which contains a chemical that absorbs oxygen so there's no oxygen here now if there's no oxygen there's going to be no germination so no germination in one no germination in one why because there was no water in two there was water in three there was in the fridge in the fourth we kept it in a plastic in a covered clear plastic bag and then we put a chemical in it which absorbed oxygen so this one is also not going to germinate now this one would be classified as a control why because it is a control in which we are providing the three important ingredients and we are doing it c for control c for comparison so we're doing a comparison and we are proving the fact that yes temperature is necessary for germination water is necessary for germination and oxygen is necessary for germination without these germination will not take place so only germination will take place in this one which was the control in which we provided all the three ingredients and so germination will take place so this is the investigate which is important that you do the practical procedures concerning the investigate then we want to discuss the uses of enzymes in germination and you see the all the food stores are in the cotyledons so the cotyledons contain all the food store and the food store is not in the form of uh, something weird it's in the form of very simple molecules number one starch number two protein and number three fat now starch and all fat and protein these are large insoluble molecules they're compact they occupy less space you don't want seeds to be heavy because they need to be dispersed so you have fat in them that is why you see when we um, get corn oil or corn seed oil or mustard seed oil we actually crush the seeds and that's where we get the oil from now the reason why we have uh, fats and oils in the seeds is because they have more energy per unit mass so more energy per unit mass means that we can have more energy and less mass so the seeds do not have to be very heavy because they will need to be dispersed by some method so they have to be light they have they can't be very heavy when we soak the seeds a chemical growth regulator is released which results in the production of these enzymes and these enzymes are amylase maltase so the star store in the seed will be converted to maltose and then the maltose will be converted to glucose and then this glucose will be respired energy will be released and this energy is needed for growth but you see in the seed till it was in the dry state till you did not soak it it did not provide the right temperature it remained as starch because we didn't want it remained in a dormant state and the seed will not germinate if you keep it in a dry state then the protein the protein is you see if you eat a lot of dal dal is very rich in protein what are dal dal is all seeds so the proteins are going to be converted to peptides in the presence of the enzyme protease and then peptidase is going to be converted to amino acids 
Now the amino acid is going to be used by the plant because this plant is growing. The root is growing, the shoot is growing, the leaves are growing. So the amino acids are needed by the plant cells to make enzymes, to make structural proteins. So the growing baby plant needs all these main ingredients, just like we need this food. We need star, we need carbohydrates, fats and proteins in our diet as well. And then the last is fat. So the fat is then converted by the enzyme lipase. So the enzyme lipase will convert the fat into fatty acids and glycerol. And where do we need the fatty acids and the glycerol? We need it for the cell membrane. We need it for the organelle membranes, the mitochondrial membrane, the chloroplast membrane. And you know new cells are being added. When new cells are being added, number one, the cellulose cell wall has to be added. So that would be made from the glucose. Then the cell membrane has to be added. Then mitochondria has to be added. Chloroplast has to be added in certain cells. So all this requires all these basic ingredients. And that, of course, is because the enzymes will break down these large insoluble molecules to the small ones, which then the plant cells can use to make their new polymers. Uh, this completes the chapter on sexual reproduction in plants and this was the video 3 and after this we will start the uh, sexual reproduction in humans and then of course we have the chapter on inheritance. So thank you for now.